Welcome back everyone. This video is going to be a redo from one of my old videos from a few years ago and it's pretty popular. It's heat shrinking metal. So that video has been out for a few years and I think I can do a little bit better job cleaning up, explain a few things a little bit better and showing a little bit more work up close. First thing I want to talk about in that older video I've had a lot of comments over the years about what book I reference in it and I didn't really show it too good. So here's the book right here, The Principles of Auto Body Repair and Repainting. And I got this in 1976 when I went to trade school. This was pretty much the industry standard. So this heat shrinking technique is explained in this book and they've got pictures how to do that. I don't know if this book is available anymore. Maybe at a used bookstore, but I think it's been out of print for a while. But this is the old ways of doing sheet metal work. And if you're interested in the old ways of pick and filing and hammer and dolling and all that kind of stuff, everything is in this book. I think a lot of the information has probably started back in the 50s and 60s that are in here. Let me get started and show you what we're going to be doing. If you're new to body work and messing with stuff like this, you may be asking, okay, what's he talking about heat shrinking? Heat shrinking is going to take a panel that's been stretched from some damage, a collision or whatever, and it's going to be warped and you're going to have actually too much metal there. It's either going to stick out too far, it's going to cave in, which is called oil canning, and it's not going to be solid. It's going to be bouncing back and forth. The heat shrink technique will shrink that metal back and put it where you want it. So this, actually this fender is the same fender I did that original video on. So I just sanded off the paint right in this area here and there's no damage in this area. The metal is nice and solid. I'm gonna hold the dolly on the backside, hammer on the front, and I've talked about it in previous videos. That's gonna start stretching the metal. The metal is getting compressed together from the hammer and dolly and when it's getting thinner, that extra material has to go somewhere so it starts spreading out and it's the same way of a collision. If it gets hit and it's a fairly sharp crease or a dent in there, that metal gets stretched, the excess has to go somewhere and it starts moving around. So let me take the hammer and dolly and I'm just going to work on this and it should stretch it where that metal is going to move back and forth. Okay, I'm just using a pretty heavy toe dolly here and a fairly heavy bumping hammer. Okay, there we go. There's an oil can right there. It pops in and it stays in there. And then it'll pop back out, but it's got a knot in it. To straighten this, I need to have that sheet metal back right in between these two points. It doesn't show up on a camera, but it's got a pretty good knot right in here. It's, it sticks out. And when you're doing a heat shrinking technique, the metal always has to be out. You can't do it when it stays in because what happens, all these panels on the exterior of a car or a truck, they all have a little bit of crown to the outside. And if you heat shrink with this panel caved in, it's gonna put a big flat spot. It's not gonna be anywhere close to where you need it. It's gonna tighten it up and hold it, but it's gonna be pretty deep you're gonna to have to fill. And it's just not gonna hammer and dolly right. It's not gonna look right. So the metal has to be pushed out just like so. Okay, I'm gonna get the torch set up and we'll heat shrink this and I'll show you how it works. Okay, first thing I wanna show is just a hammer and dolly I'm gonna use right here. Like I said, it's just a, uh, a heavier weight toe dolly and a heavy weight bumping hammer. It's smooth on the face of it. One thing I don't use is a shrinking hammer. When I learned to do body work years ago, I'd never even seen one of these, didn't have one. We didn't have any at the school. And if you look at that face on that, it's like a waffle pattern to it. I think people get the idea this somehow magically shrinks the metal when you're hammering on something. I don't think that's the case at all. What I think it does, all this little knurling on there, it bites into the sheet metal. So when you're hammering, it may keep it from stretching a little bit. So I don't know, I think it should be called an anti-stretching hammer. And what happens, it'll put little bitty divots, like little chips almost into sheet metal. You'll have a little bit of carbon from the torch. And this kind of drives it into the, all those little bitty pits that it puts in there. And you've got to clean that out before you can put filler on. So you'd either have to sandblast it or a wire wheel or something. So for those reasons, I don't use this hammer. Okay, one thing you definitely don't want to use on heat shrinking is a propane torch. It could be propane gas or map gas. 
it doesn't work. And I know there's videos out there and guys will use them, but at the end of this video, I'll show you a demonstration and I'll talk about why you don't use this. So I'm gonna be using oxygen acetylene torch with a small tip and I think it's like a number two tip. And this is what we used to use when we were brazing sheet metal together. So underneath the panel that I'm gonna be working on, I always have a bucket of water. There's maybe four inches of water in there. I've got a shop rag in here. I want everything close. Once I heat this up, I want my hammer and dolly close to me. I also use the bucket to set the torch on. You may have to do multiple areas where you're heat shrinking. So you want that torch to be handy. You don't have to shut it off. You can let it run here. And like I said, you want everything close at hand because you have to work quick. Before I get the torch going, I'm gonna explain what I'm gonna be doing. That high spot is right here. And like I said, sometimes it'll take multiple attempts to heat shrink this. I'm gonna start in the center and I'm gonna heat that up uh, cherry red, about the size of a dime. I'm gonna take my hammer and dolly. I'll put the dolly on the back and just support it. I really don't wanna put any pressure on it. I just wanna hold it there. And I'm gonna work the hammer all the way around this area and work in towards the center. And you want the hammer blows to come from the outside in and try and help force everything into the center. And you'll end up with a little knot there and then you'll just tap it down a few times, get it fairly flat. You don't wanna hammer on it too much and actually stretch it more. We'll hit it with the cold water. We can check and see if the high spot is gone. More than likely, it'll take a few spots, we'll heat up. And there is no set amount of heat shrinks you have to do on a panel, it depends. It could be stretched in a long crease. You just have to keep going. And I usually start in the middle and I'll just kind of work around till it's where I need it. Every dent's gonna be different, so it's just a matter of how it comes out. But you can run your hand over it and you'll be able to tell if you've got it where you need it. I'm gonna crack open the acetylene. And we've got quite a bit of carbon. It's a black soot coming off of there. We wanna roll it back a little bit. We'll still have some carbon. Then we add the oxygen to it. And you can see that inner tip. It's about right to there. We wanna roll that back. There, there's actually like almost two tips in there. We wanna get it cleaned up and right there, a nice sharp point. Now, you don't wanna to go too far with the oxygen because you can, listen to the torch here. That's way too much oxygen and that can actually start burning into the sheet metal a little bit. So we wanna keep it about right there. I've got my hammer right here. I've got my dolly. I'm gonna put another one in here. I said about the size of the dime. It's actually feeling pretty good there. I'm gonna put another one over in here. Yeah, it's nice and tight now. Can't push it out, can't push it in. And it'll be a little bit wavy. That's where your hammer and dolly comes in to finish your metal work. But we've got the knot out of it. We got the oil canning out of it. So it's nice and solid. It's almost where we want it now. It's just a matter of finishing all out and getting it fairly smooth. Okay, let me show you what I was talking about, the propane torch. Take the acetylene tip again, and you can watch how fast it'll heat this sheet metal up. Actually, that heat just kind of caved it right back in, but it was a matter of a, a few seconds. Now we'll take the propane torch, and if you get a look at the tip on here, it's wide, it's spread out. You're not going to get a nice hot flame right out of the center to heat this up. It's gonna put heat all over the place. It won't heat it up red hot, and it's just gonna spread the heat around. So let's take a look. It's 
still wouldn't get it red hot. All that heat spread all over the place. That's the main reason you can't use a propane torch. With the oxygen acetylene torch, you can heat it up quick. You can hammer and dolly on it before that heat spreads, quench it with water, and with some practice, it'll work out for you. So I hope this video helped you understand a little bit better about heat shrinking and how it works and the correct way to do it. Like I said, you can't do it on today's vehicles, but older stuff, restoration, some classic cars, and like any technique, it takes practice to get the hang of it. If you have a chance, give it a try. Thanks for watching.